to you all and to all those that are listening on Zoom. We welcome Sheila Cartley today, who is leading our morning worship. Thank you for being with us today. I do have a few notices to uh, read out yet again. Uh, one of them is Sarah Harris, who is the safeguarding, district safeguarding lady, has organised a Creating Safer Space Safeguarding Training session here in our church, and that's on Tuesday, the 30th of November, and it's at seven o'clock. Um, you will need to book a space by emailing Sarah Harris. There is a messy church today at 4 p.m., and then it will be on the 12th of December. Uh, the next church council meeting meets here at 7.30 on Monday the 15th, so not tomorrow, but a week tomorrow. And then we also have a working party on Saturday the 20th of November from 9.30 a.m. Monday the 8th of November tomorrow, there is a free online workshop called Sharing Jesus. Um, you'll have to ask Penny if you would like the link for these. Um, and a final request from Helen, we have to decide our Christmas programme and are planning a Christmas Eve communion. Um, we're going to be doing that at 7.30 p.m. Let us now pray. Heavenly Father, your name is wonderful and glorious. Everyone on earth sings of your wondrous works. You are the King of glory. We worship you. Lord, we come to your presence in the unity of faith to ask for the infilling of your power. Without your power, we can do nothing. We pray that your glory radiates in our lives as we live as your ambassadors throughout the days of our lives. Let none of us here go empty-handed. Go with us in the service and make it a fulfilling time in your presence. Amen. Now over to Sheila Carty and welcome. Well, good morning, Matlock. I don't think we've been here before, have we? What makes you lot so lucky? Do you do the lottery? Well, your luck's finally run out. I'm here now. And I don't really know what I'm doing today. You see, we're doing something a little bit different. It's a climate Sunday. We hope it all goes well, but if it doesn't, we can blame one of your lot for coming up with the idea. Seriously, the earth is the Lord's creation. And if we want to please God, then we ought to take care of it, didn't we? I thought to start things off, we could all make a pledge. That's if you agree with it. As the whole of creation looks with eager longing for the redemption of humankind, let us pledge ourselves anew to serve our creator God, the Father who is maker of all things, the Son through whom all things are made, and the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who renews the face of the earth. Let us stand, if we are able, to affirm our commitment to care actively for God's creation as we say together, Lord of life and giver of hope, we pledge ourselves to care for your creation, to reduce our waste, to live sustainably and to value the rich diversity of life. 
may your wisdom guide us that life in all its forms may flourish in, vo in voicing creation's prize. May the commitments we have made this day be matched by our faithful living. Amen. And you may as well stand because we continue our praise in singing Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. And now we turn to the Lord in prayer. Glorious God, the whole of creation proclaims your marvellous work. Increase in us a capacity to wonder and delight in it, that heaven's praise may echo in our hearts and our lives be spent as good stewards of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray with thanksgiving for the world that the Lord has given us. We give thanks for the earth that we the air that we breathe, the fresh water we can drink, the food that we eat, and the nature that we are so blessed to enjoy. For the community that supports us, the family who love us, and the children who inspire us. We give you thanks, great Lord, but we are also fearful and pray because climate change threatens all that we know, love and cherish. Created God, maker of heaven and earth, we acknowledge our failure to live responsibly as part of your creation. We have taken what we want without considering the consequences. We have wasted and discarded without thought for the future. Open our hearts and minds to the signs of our times, to the groaning of creation, so that we may turn from our greed and lack of vision and see a world being made anew in Jesus Christ our Lord, who died that we might all be forgiven. Amen. And now we have our first Bible reading, which is from Genesis, and Anne is going to read for us. Thank you. The first reading can be found on page four of the Bible, and it's Genesis chapter one, beginning at verse 27. So God created human beings, making them to be like himself. He created male and female, blessed them and said, have many children so that your descendants will live all over the earth and bring it under their control. I am putting you in charge of the fish, the birds, and all the wild animals. I have provided all kinds of grain and all kinds of fruit for you to eat. But for all the wild animals and for all the birds, I have provided grass and leafy plants for food. And it was done. God looked at everything he had made, and he was very pleased. Evening passed, and morning came, and that was the sixth day. Thanks be to God. And in case you couldn't recognise, that was going to be the children's hymn. But <laughs> sadly, we haven't got any children, but hopefully you enjoyed it anyway. 
And uh, now we're going to have our second Bible reading from Isaiah, and Julie's reading it for us. Thank you. I'm reading from Isaiah, chapter 24, verses 4 to 11. The earth dries up and withers, the whole world grows weak, both earth and sky decay. The people have defiled the earth by breaking God's laws and by violating the covenant he made to last forever. So God has pronounced a curse on the earth. Its people are paying for what they have done. Fewer and fewer remain alive. The grapevines wither and wine is becoming scarce. Everyone who was once happy is now sad, and the joyful music of their harps and drums has ceased. There is no more happy singing over wine. No one enjoys its taste anymore. In the city, everything is in chaos, and people lock themselves in their houses for safety. Thanks be to God. The day that I came to write this, uh, my daily reading was called Dad, Start a Tradition. And it was about fathers and how they brought their children up with a view to the future. And it finished with this wonderful phrase, in order to succeed, you must take God with one hand and your children with the other. What a fabulous vision, eh? It brought to mind immediately my own father. My sister said straight away, but he didn't believe in God. Unfortunately, although we used to speak often, I never had that conversation with him because he died so many years ago before I came to know God really myself. I just know that his deeds were those of a good man. You might even say that he was an eco-warrior of his time well before it was fashionable to be one. My dad never owned a car. He cycled everywhere. In fact, he called cars jam jars. I don't know if you've ever heard that before. If necessary, he caught a bus or the train. He recycled everything he could. All of his screws and his nails in the shed were in old coffee jars. The nail would be screwed under a shelf and you'd just undo the jar and get your nails out. I don't know if you've ever seen that done before. It was quite ingenious, really. He repaired our shoes for us, satchels, handbags, of course, he made his own compost, which he needed for all the vegetables that he grew. I remember him telling me about this experimental place in Wales that he'd visited, where they were generating power from wind turbines and solar panels. How could we know back then that they would become so commonplace now? Most of the things that I know about nature I learned from my dad. And they give me a great sense of belonging to nature and the seasons. I would never dream of littering unless it was something an animal could eat, such as an apple core or a banana skin. And hopefully I've passed that on to the children that I've cared for. 
In Genesis, we hear how God made both man and woman in his image. Neither one more like God than the other. And from the beginning, humans were placed by God at the very top of his creation to rule over something, is to have absolute authority and control over it. God has ultimate rule over the earth and he exercises his authority with loving care. When God delegated some of his authority to the human race, he expected us to take responsibility for the environment and the other creatures that share our planet. So we shouldn't be careless or wasteful as we fulfill this charge. But sadly, we have been. God was careful how he made this earth. But we have been careless about how we took care of it. God saw that all he created was very good. We are part of God's creation and he is pleased with how he made us. If at times we feel low or even worthless, we should remember that God made us for a good reason because we are valuable to him. Let's just turn to Isaiah now. This chapter begins what is known as Isaiah's apocalypse. Doesn't sound too good, does it? Uh, where we, he's discussing God's judgment on the whole world for its sin. And these chapters describe the last days when God will judge the whole world, finally and permanently removing evil. Not only the people suffer their, for their sins, but even the land suffered the effects of evil and law-breaking. Today, we see the results of sin in our own land. Pollution, crime, addiction, and poverty. Sin affects every aspect of society so it's extensively that even those faithful to God suffer. We can't blame God for these conditions because Human sin has brought them about. Mainly in my mind because of the lust for money and greed generally. The more we who are believers renounce sin and speak against immoral practices and share God's word with others, the more we can slow down society's deterioration. So we mustn't give up. Each one of us can make a difference. You might wonder how you, as an individual, can make a big difference. or if you can change anything, or perhaps you clued up already. I think Matlock's quite a, a green place to live, isn't it? There's many small things that you can do can, that can make a big difference, which come under three headings. And if you like, there are new three R's. You remember the old three R's? 
reading, writing, and arithmetic. Can any tell, anybody tell me what the new three R's are? Anybody got a clue? Recycle. Recycle. Reuse. Reuse. Reduce. Brilliant. I won't go into details here, as we'll be here all day, but hopefully you can swap ideas amongst yourselves and information that you've individually got later on and look at ideas that can be used in church as well as at home. Normally it's the old leading the young, but in this case, children might know more than us. So I hope that they won't be shy in sharing with us. After our intercessions, we will watch a video from Tear Fund based on the Lord's Prayer, which I hope that we'll all find very helpful. I know that climate change is a very big subject to take on board, but it's very important to all of us. So whoever takes the lead in this, whether it's us or our children, I don't think that we'll fail if we remember that in order to succeed, you must take God with one hand and your children with the other. Amen. Time to sing again. Think of a world without any flowers. We're just singing verses one, two, and six. Thank you. Now we come to our prayers of intercession, where we think of the needs of others as well as ourselves. And in a moment of quiet, we bring before you, Lord, all of our worries and concern regarding friends and family, situations that are troubling us at this time. We lift them up to you now, Lord, our precious Lord, and we think especially of Jean's family, Diane and Hazel, and we'd like to pray for Hazel and her family at this time. Lord, we thank you for the beauty and wonder that can be seen in all of creation. As you breathed life into this world and into our beings, we ask you to breathe life into us once again. We pray for you to give us the strength to respond to creation in a way which reflects your loving care and concern for all things. As we breathe in your love, Help us to breathe out your love. As we breathe in your grace, help us to breathe out your grace. As we breathe in your beauty, help us to breathe out your beauty. May we reflect your nature in all that we do. Creator God, giver of life, you sustain the earth and direct the nations. In this time of climate crisis, grant us clarity to hear the groaning of creation and the cries of the poor. Challenge us to change our lifestyles guide our leaders to take courageous action. Enable your church to be a beacon of hope. 
and foster within us a renewed vision of your purposes for your world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by and for whom all things were made. Amen. Our final hymn is for the healing of the nations. Dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity to show our gratitude, if only in a small way. By bringing these offerings before you now, we pray that you will bless them and guide us in the ways of using them to further your work in this church and this community. We want to serve you, Lord, but as in all things, we need the guidance of your Holy Spirit and the love of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So may God, the Holy Spirit, who hovered over the waters of creation and formed the world from chaos, form you in the likeness of Christ and renew the face of the earth. Amen. And thank you everybody who helped in the making of this service. Bless you all.